everyone, today we are going to teach you how to give fluids and injections to lizards. Bearded dragons don't often drink water from a bowl. They get a lot of their hydration from their food items. So if they don't get enough water-based food, they can become dehydrated. And dehydration in bearded dragons, along with other reptiles, can cause issues like gout, constipation, issues shedding, which is called dyscdysis or improper shedding, or it can even cause kidney disease. So it's definitely important to make sure your bearded dragon or other reptile is getting enough fluids in its body. For the first half of this video, we are going to be focusing primarily on bearded dragons. So signs of dehydration in dragons include wrinkled skin, tacky or sticky saliva, lack of elasticity in their skin, which basically means if you pinch their skin, it takes them a while for the skin to kind of unpinch. And it can also be seen in the form of sunken in eyes in extreme dehydration cases. This particular bearded dragon I wouldn't say is severely dehydrated. He might be slightly dehydrated. He's part of our rescue program. So he's gonna be our example of how to give fluids to a dragon today. If you have a dehydrated bearded dragon, there are a few things you can do at home. You don't necessarily have to go to a vet if it's just slightly dehydrated. A few things you can try are giving them baths or soaks with an electrolyte mix. I mean, it's got electrolytes. It's got what the body craves. This is great for dehydrated reptiles. Another thing you can do is offer them foods that just have a high water content to them like iceberg lettuce. Seriously, the only purpose or good thing about iceberg lettuce is that it has a lot of water and it does help for rehydrating reptiles. So you can, in this case, give a bearded dragon iceberg lettuce. You can also lightly mist their salads with water or you could use a pipette or a small syringe and actually hand water them if you really want to spoil your dragon. Finally, there are some insects that are pretty high in water content as well, like hornworms and bearded dragons love hornworms. Those are great at rehydrating these guys too. In case you want to go the back route, we're going to show you really quickly here how to give a bearded dragon a bath. Down here we have a container with some water in it. You don't need much water, just, I mean, a knuckle deep or so. You don't want them to drown or have to swim in it. And temperature wise, we're looking at about 85 to 90 degrees is ideal for a bearded dragon temp oh, bath temp. So we've got 90 degree water in here and just plain water will work for a bath, but if you really want to help with dehydration, we do really recommend the electrolyte soak. So for this, you basically just sprinkle in some of these crystals. It's one scoop per gallon. So we're going to sprinkle in most of this scoop here. Whoops. And throw some of it on the table. That's it's for good luck. Yes, for good luck, exactly. And with the water being pretty warm, those crystals are going to dissolve rather quickly. And then Bearded Dragon goes in and he'll be like, ah. Or he'll try to go out. Yep. Oh, now we realize it's a te comfy temperature. Here, go soak. Sometimes you soak. set them in and then do this. There we go. Bearded so dragon out. in the tub. They will drink some of the water and that's fine. Even with the electrolytes, this is, isn't going to hurt them. They might soak some in through their cloaca a bit as well. I mean, it's an opening, so it's also going to help them rehydrate. And you want to let them soak, whether it's a snake or a lizard or whatever you're trying to rehydrate in the reptile world, let them soak for about 15 or 20 minutes. At that time, they'll have absorbed as much as they're going to anyway. And it's going to start cooling down in temperature to kind of an uncomfortable temperature for them. Now, if you have a severely dehydrated bearded dragon, a bath is only going to do so much. So at that point, you'll want to bring it into a qualified reptile veterinarian. So this part of the video is actually for the veterinarians looking to get into reptiles and the vet techs looking to get experience with reptiles. Uh, this part of the video is for you. We're going to teach you or show you how we give fluids to bearded dragons. And you might be wondering, are we qualified to give this information? And actually we quite frequently, like once every couple of weeks, have a vet tech class from a university or we have an actual vet clinic staff, group of staff come in to train and learn about about reptiles in a more clinical setting. So we teach them all the time how to give fluids because that's one of their most commonly asked questions. We teach them how to do injections. So this part of the video is for you guys. Hopefully it can help. First, just to clarify, there is a difference between sterile water and sterile saline. I mean, if you're in the vet field, you know this already, but for people who aren't in the vet field, figure you're watching too, I can educate you on this as well. Sterile water is for reconstituting powdered antibiotics or medicines. And so you don't wanna be injecting this straight into an animal's body just alone. Uh, sterile saline has electrolytes added to it. So this is what is used for rehydrating dehydrated reptiles. 
The dosage of sterile saline for um, fluid therapy for reptiles is 10 to 30 mils per kilogram per day. So this bearded dragon in particular is about 300 grams, meaning depending on how dehydrated he is, he should be getting between three and nine mils per day. Now this guy isn't very dehydrated, so for the sake of this video, we're still gonna give him some fluids because it's not gonna hurt him. He is, if you look, maybe slightly dehydrated because you can see those wrinkles down his sides, but sometimes as they're moving and kind of sucking in their bodies, they get those loose skin wrinkles anyway. Just to be safe, we're only gonna give him three mils of this sterile saline today because we don't wanna overdo it. Now, if he had a lot of wrinkles and his eyes were sunken in, which is a sign of severe dehydration, then we'd be giving him closer to six to maybe even the full nine mils of the sterile saline. First things first, the needle. The gauge of the needle or the size of the needle is important with reptiles as it is with any animal. Funny thing, though, if you're not in the vet field, the bigger the number, like this is a 23 gauge needle, the bigger the number, the smaller the needle. So for reptiles, you don't want to go anything lower than a 22 gauge needle. Otherwise, it's just too big of a needle and it's very uncomfortable for injections. So today and pretty much every day here, we like to use the 23 gauge needle. It seems to do well for most of the reptiles we take in. And what we're going to do is just twist this onto our three mil syringe since we're giving three mils today. And we're going to take the cap off, grab our sterile saline, insert the needle as straight as possible so that you don't bend it. We're going to extract three mils. There we go. Push out the extra to make it an exact three mils. And I'm gonna flick the sides of the syringe to dislodge any bubbles, air bubbles that are sticking to the side. And then now that they've all kind of accumulated near the top and combined into one bubble, I'm going to very slowly squeeze out that bubble. And now I know there is there are no air bubbles trapped in that needle. It is just solid saline. Next, we're gonna grab our patient. And if you're new to injections, you might want a second person to help you out. Um, we're gonna see how it goes with him. It depends on how squirmy he is. Since I'm right-handed, I'm going to have him facing the left because then his scales will be facing towards the needle. And basically the needle will go against the scales, if that makes sense. With bearded dragons, if you apply a little bit of pressure on their eyes, they usually calm down. This guy doesn't seem to want to though so this will be kind of interesting here you go if you have a particularly squirmy patient like i do here put them on something slippery and that'll make them um squirm a little bit less or they won't get traction on the squirming exactly they won't go anywhere i mean in a clinic they're going to be sitting on a slippery table unless you have a towel underneath them in which case just remove the towel the injection should go in the front half of the body and it's a subcutaneous injection so it's going to go underneath the skin layer and in between the skin and the muscle this is not going to be an intermuscular injection you don't want to inject fluid into the muscle. This is going in that void in between the skin and the muscle layer. So to do that, you kind of have to tent up the skin to separate it from the muscle and slide the needle in between those two layers. So we're going to tent the skin here and then insert the needle with the bevel or the flat side of the needle facing away from the body. So there's less surface area being punctured of the skin. And in the tent, we're going to slide the needle in in between the scales. And bearded dragons have really tough skin, so you kind of have to apply a bit of pressure. And what I like to do, now we're, we're in, by the way, I like to push the needle in a little ways and all the while keeping the needle as parallel to the body as possible. You don't want to accidentally hold it at an angle and then go into the muscle layer. Again, this is right underneath the skin. But what I like to do is I insert the needle a little bit further in and then I push down on the plunger and you can see it filling up with that saline. And as I do this, I slowly pull the needle out and that kind of disperses the saline solution across a wider surface area than if I just leave the needle in one spot. And I'm gonna feel it here, okay. I'm actually gonna pull out because this is starting to feel a little bit taut. You don't want to inject so much saline that it creates kind of a pressure wound here. Um, you can actually cause issues if you have too much saline in one spot. The skin can only stretch so much, basically. So what we do with the rest of this, since he still needs one more mil of saline, we're just gonna go to the other side of the body and do the same thing. We're gonna pinch the skin, insert the needle, push it in a little bit further, and depress the plunger. You can see it filling right up. Perfect, we're gonna slide the needle out. Ta-da! I didn't slide the needle much as I moved there because there's only one mil left and I knew that could fit in one specific spot. Whereas two mils on this side, I had to move that syringe back so it would disperse. But there you go, he's got two little lumps here and he will metabolize or soak that into his body over the next 15 minutes or so. And it gives him a little boost of electrolytes. 
Don't mind the dirt on his face, by the way. He was digging in dirt right before we started filming. And that is how you give fluids to bearded dragons. There are other lizards out there that have more taut skin, and therefore you can't really tent it up. So those take a little bit more practice, and snakes are very difficult to give fluids to because they have very taut skin. So really, bearded dragons are a good one to practice on and start to get the feel for it because they have looser skin than the other species. For the second part of this video, we are going to show you how to give antibiotic injections to lizards. Now, we've already made a video on this in the past using bearded dragons, so today we figured we would mix it up and use a blue tongue skink instead. If you would like to watch the injection using a bearded dragon video, you can watch the video right here. But for today, we are using Vienna. She is a beautiful blue tongue skink in our adoption program right now, but she came in with a bit of an upper respiratory infection. So we're finishing up her series of 10 ceftazidime injections, and once she's done with that, she's really improving, so I think she'll be ready for adoption. But we figured, since she needs an injection today anyway, we'd use her in today's video. So this is something that will apply to more of you watching if you're just a day-to-day -day reptile keeper. If you have a reptile that gets sick and you bring it to the vet and it gets prescribed antibiotics, specifically what we're using today, which is ceftazidime, which we have great luck. It seems to work really well with reptiles, but it's not just a one and done injection that the vet does at the clinic. They will send you home with nine more injections. This is a series of 10 injections that treats a lot of ailments and you will have to do some of these on your own. So that's why we're making today's video is to show you how to do it. First of all, this medication doesn't have a very long shelf life at room temperature, so you have to store it in your freezer. You have to keep this frozen. That means when it's injection day, you take out the pre-dose, which our vet pre-dosed this, by the way. And so you take it out, it's gonna be frozen, so just hold it in your hand for about five minutes and that'll thaw the antibiotic. Once it's thawed and ready to go, like this one is, then you can inject it. So we're gonna go down to Vienna here. The injections for antibiotics are always in the front legs of lizards or in the front third of the body for snakes. That's because then the body metabolizes it before it reaches the kidneys, which will deactivate or pretty much absorb the antibiotic, making it essentially useless. So if we were, we were to inject her back legs, the medicine would reach her kidneys before reaching the rest of her body, and it would deactivated. So we don't want that to happen. We want it to go all throughout her body and do its job. So we're going to inject in the, fir the front legs. With lizards, you inject in the front triceps and biceps, and you'll want to alternate those, uh, the muscles themselves, as well as the legs themselves. So for today's injection, we'll probably do the front bicep, but then her next injection, we might do the left tricep, and then the right tricep, and back and forth and so on, just to spread out the injection so they're not just all accumulated in one part of the leg. Again, just like for fluids, you want the bevel or the flat part of the needle facing away from the body. That way it pierces less of the skin. And you definitely want to go in between the scales, not through a scale. We're gonna go right into the mus muscle tissue here. So instead of holding the syringe parallel to the body and going like straight in underneath the skin, for an intermuscular injection, you wanna go into the muscle tissue. So you wanna hold the needle at about a 45 degree angle. So we've got bevel out, 45 degree angle, and we're gonna go in between the scales. There we go, just enough to submerge the needle. You don't wanna push it all the way through or get to bone, of course. Now I'm going to depress the plunger and twist as I pull out if possible, which there's nothing seeping out afterwards, so it all got in there. We are good to go, a nice quick injection there. Now with all these needles we've been going through today, you might be wondering, how do you dispose of them? Do you throw them in the garbage? And the answer is no, you don't just throw them in the garbage, you dispose of the needle in a sharp spin. So we actually have one here at Snake Discovery, and basically it's super easy to use these things. You just slide the needle in, use the little V shape here to pull the needle off, and then the syringe you can throw away. It does cost money to recycle in a, uh, a container full of needles, so if you put the whole syringe in too, they fill up faster and it costs more, so just a little tip, throw the syringes away, since those don't have to go in a needle's bin anyway, and just have needles in the sharps bin. So that is how you give fluids and injections to lizards. It's the same concept with snakes, front half or front third of the body, where the injections are going, the angles and needles and all that, but snakes are built a bit differently, so the actual uh, injection part does feel a bit different, so it is given a little bit differently. So maybe one of these days we'll come up with a snake version of this video, but hopefully it came in handy. I, of course, want to 
thank the lizards who are helping us in today's video. This is Bruce. He is almighty. He is a two-year-old bearded dragon who is currently available for adoption at Snake Discovery. And this is Vienna, who is around two years old as well, and she's a beautiful Indonesian blue-tongued skink. A little huffy, but she's a good girl too. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something new, or at least found it kind of interesting to learn how to give shots to lizards. Thank you Patreon backers, because your funds help us provide or fund the medications, and the fluids, and the needles, and the syringes, everything for all these rescued animals. So thank you Patreon backers. You allow us to do so much with saving reptiles. And everybody watching helps us out too. Thank you so much everybody, and we'll see you next time.